Good evening and welcome to our second Healing of the Body class. Well, we're being given the message loud and clear that we are to carry on understanding the truthful body at a deeper level. The first class was so very full and thorough and difficult to perhaps in one class fully grasp or grasp fully enough in order to go forward and really understand what body is at a level where we're free to then explore body and explore what has been called the healing of thousands of different ailments or diseases or injuries that our physical sense of body can experience, which are all witnessed as healable as we lift into the truthful sense and experience of body. And so let's today do some revisiting, do some expounding, do some deepening about body, and in that way prepare ourselves for the rest of the classes. By the way, I think it's also clear that we'll be having more than our planned seven classes for this series. So we'll fit those in somehow and let you know how that is. But I think be ready for a longer than seven class series. This is to be very deep and very thorough. And the reason is that we must be able to, especially this group in this class, lift, truly lift in a living, real, practical way out of the false sense of body that's kept us in bondage to a sense of two or more powers, actually thousands of different powers, some good, some bad, some destructive, some fatal, so that we can be free finally of the bondage of the physical sense, live the spiritual, truthful I that each of us is, and in that way escape this parenthesis of karma that keeps us stuck in a place where We wish to hear truth, we're driven to hear truth, and yet all the truth study we do, all the meditating we do and silence we have, still leaves us unable to, when it comes down to it, witness our body, lift out of whatever it may be suffering with or whatever injury, disease, pain it's experiencing, into truth and thereby be free. You see, only when we're able to do this Can we start living our true purpose? And our true purpose includes body. Our body is not just for us to run around and enjoy ourselves with, but our body, and it's for that as well, of course, the freedom of the infinite, the freedom of harmony and joy and bliss. But you see, the only purpose of spiritual being is to give and serve of its infinity, of its love, of its life, of its kindness, of its wisdom. It's spiritual capacity. So only as we are truly free in spiritual living and spiritual body are we able to begin to truly serve. And so it's really important for us now who are hearing this message to lift finally into that truthful sense of being or experience of being and truthful experience of body so that we can start serving our truth as we are meant to be. And so let's revisit and hear some more clarity. Only God is. God is infinite, incorporeal, omnipresent. And therefore that's the only being there is. There is no other type of being. There is just a false sense of truthful being. But truthful being is infinite, incorporeal, omnipresent. And therefore it's only as we lift our awareness into the truthful I that each of us is that we begin to experience that truth. Remember, we cannot bring truth down to a lesser level of consciousness. All we can do is rise in consciousness to truthful consciousness 
And then there, all the freedom of spirit, all the freedom of truth, all the oneness, all the omnipresence of truth is as free as the air in tangible, practical experience. Any time we are thinking in terms of a finite or local place or activity or condition or organ or function, any time we are even thinking of our body as being this local physical thing that we've thought in our full sense of spirit to be our body, and then even worse, when we have something wrong with the body, a pain, some kind of suffering, illness, disease, injury, or if we're very underweight or very overweight, whatever it is that is of a discordant experience of the body, as soon as we believe that there is something happening in this local physical body that now we need to try to apply truth to in order to heal it, we're so far away from truth and so far away from being able to experience the truthful body that we're left in frustration, we're left scratching our head or even tearing our hair out as to why truth isn't working for us. Why after all these years or decades of reading and listening and attending classes and meditating and being in silence and experiencing very often the most beautiful, deep, peace and joy and freedom. Why is my illness not healing? My disease not healing? My injury not healing? Why is my body either under or overweight and not adjusting itself? I'm even changing my whole diet and it's still not adjusting itself or is not maintaining an adjusted, more comfortable or satisfying body weight. All these questions come to us and we cannot understand why it is that truth isn't working for us, particularly after all our years of devoted study and practice. The reason is that, and there's just one reason, and we heard it yesterday, and that reason is that we've completely misunderstood what body is. It really is shocking, isn't it, after all these years or decades to realize this. But listen, again as we heard yesterday, I think, Truth, once truth is truly known, is quickly evident to experience. In fact, it's spontaneously evident to experience, but sometimes because the mind is very slow in its experience, in its way of operation, it sometimes takes a few minutes or a few hours or even a few days or even a few weeks to suddenly detect the truth that has been realized. So if truth is not evident, and if truth isn't sustained in one's experience, there's only one reason, and that is we haven't known the truth. Know the truth, and that very truth will set you free. The Master, of course, was telling us the truth. And so the very first thing we must realize and own up to and accept is that if we're not witnessing truth, we don't know the truth. You see how important knowing the truth is. So many students I speak to or read from emails and healing silence requests just want to sit in the silence. They don't want to know more truth. Enough words, they say. Well, it's interesting that all the great masters gave us many words, and that is because we have to know the truth before we are able to be set free in truth. So let us hear the truth again. God is the only. And God is infinite, never finite or local or objectified. God is infinite. God is the infinitude. God is incorporeal, never corporeal. We are at a lower level of consciousness simply having a corporeal sense of that which is 100% incorporeal. 
And in order to experience the truth of the incorporeal, we have to rise into the incorporeal consciousness. And God is omnipresence, omnipresent. Anywhere in the whole of the infinitude that we care to focus on, there is the whole of God, fully evident, complete, perfect, as that very place we are observing, that very form, if we are observing form, that very condition, that very activity, whatever it is and wherever it is we're observing, there is the whole of God. The whole of God, the whole of the infinite, exists fully at every point of itself simultaneously. And what is God? God is consciousness. Consciousness doesn't exist in a body somewhere. Consciousness doesn't exist in a mind. That's like saying the ocean exists in the wetness. Or the wetness exists in the ocean. Really, this isn't true. The ocean is, period. And the ocean has the experience of itself, which is wetness, saltiness, waviness, and so on. We cannot separate the ocean from the wetness. We cannot separate the wetness from the ocean. We cannot separate the ocean from the salt, nor the salt from the ocean. We cannot separate the wave from the ocean, nor the ocean from the wave. The ocean is, period. And in this way we understand God is, period. And God is consciousness. And there's nothing else other than consciousness. I am the Lord, and besides me there is none else. I am consciousness, and besides me there is none else. And so forget what the mind detects of consciousness. The mind is 100% detecting a false sense, a corporeal sense of that which is actually incorporeal. And so right away realize that because God is infinite and because God is consciousness, then consciousness is infinite, period. Your consciousness is infinite. There's no locality in your consciousness. There is no objectified anything in your consciousness. And your consciousness is not being a locality, is not being an objectified form. Your consciousness is infinite always and incapable of producing finiteness, incapable of producing locality, incapable of producing any objectified form of itself. It is omnipresence. The whole of the infinite the whole of consciousness exists at every point of itself at the same time. There's nothing local about omnipresence. The whole is wherever you observe. That doesn't make it local. It makes it the whole. Simply as this moment or aspect of awareness, but never local, never objectified, never finite. You can't finitize omnipresence. The whole of the infinite is right here where you are, where you're observing. That doesn't make it finite, it makes it still the infinite, and better than that, the whole of the infinite right there where you're observing. Never is that finite, do you see that? And so in the whole of consciousness, despite what the mind would have us believe, there is no finiteness, no locality, nothing objectified. Consciousness is the infinite, and its only capability is infinity. Its only capability is omnipresence, not local presence or finite presence. Its only capability is that which it is. That makes sense, doesn't it? You cannot have a capability outside of that which you are or different than that which you are. All you can do is be that which you are. Now, let's lift up into God and realize all God can be is God. That means all God can be is infinite. All God can be is incorporeal. All God can be is omnipresent. Therefore, 
because and and let me back up all god can be is consciousness god is consciousness therefore because there is none else you are that therefore and i am that and all is that therefore all you can be is infinite all you can be is incorporeal all you can be is omnipresent omnipresence being omnipresent this very presence you are is omnipresence as this presence not finite not local not objectified certainly not of matter not of physicality or materiality there is no such thing in god god is consciousness and because there is none else remember i am the lord and besides me there is none else i am that and besides me there is none else and so you cannot change god into different substance different presence or different type of presence and an objectified presence a finite presence a presence of matter a presence of flesh a presence of stone a presence of fabric no 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 only god is therefore only god presence is substance is being is and that is consciousness again let's leave the mind out of this discussion at the moment get right out of the mind the mind is a tool it is not you it is a tool of you it's like a tool you have in your toolbox it is for your use and your free use your wondrous divine use and it's only because we have grown to believe that which the mind presents to us as being something of its own self and the whole world of some things of their own selves that we have got lost we've become the prodigal son and daughter and we're lost from truth so put that mind for this discussion at the moment back in its toolbox and let's concentrate on pure being pure god pure truth god is consciousness the infinite is consciousness and besides consciousness there is none else consciousness is incorporeal consciousness is omnipresent and besides consciousness there is none else you cannot therefore change consciousness into anything else and god is one there is only one one being one substance one place one consciousness one omnipresence one incorporeality one infinitude and because the whole of it is equally present at every point of itself at the same time then all is oneness nothing nothing of the whole of the infinitude and the whole of eternity is separate from this very place that you are this very second none of god is separate or apart from this very place where you are this very being that you are and all is this very second and because of that because of omnipresence because of oneness god being the infinite omnipresence eternity the incorporeal doesn't give or withhold it can't again it's incapable of doing such a thing and the reason is as we've just heard it's already here the whole of god the whole of omnipresence the whole of the infinite is already here so there's nothing to give and certainly nothing to withhold it's incapable of giving and incapable of withholding because it is omnipresent omnipresence cannot give cannot withhold because it's already here and eternally here and infinitely here and so again you see if we're ever seeking for some good from god 
if we're ever searching for truth, then we're lost immediately because it's already here. All we have to do is rise into the consciousness of omnipresence, of the incorporeal, of eternity, of infinity, of God, and all of that being consciousness, pure consciousness. And then we witness that all being here in a completely tangible and visible way as our utter harmony, health, life, love, abundance, joy, freedom. And because of oneness, the inseparable, indivisible oneness, and again, I like how we're hearing it today, and that is that God or oneness or the incorporeal, the infinite, omnipresence, is incapable of being anything different than itself. And so, because of oneness, there is one body only. Again, Oneness doesn't produce seven billion different bodies of itself. The mind has done that. But in truth, remember, keep the mind away at the moment. Before the mind, in truth, which is in reality, there is one body. There's one amount. There's one place. There's one condition only. There's one character, one nature only. And that is the whole of the infinite being that one. The whole of eternity being that one. Incapable of being anything different, anything separate. Incapable of having an and. One and. No, it's ridiculous. All of the infinitude has already been taken up by oneness. There's no room left for an and. Not even one grain. Not even one atom. Not even one subatomic and a trillionth of the subatomic. The whole of the infinitude and the whole of eternity, all being one, is already fully taken up, full of itself, without border, without end, without beginning, without change. And so there is one body. And that body is consciousness. There's nothing but consciousness. And so do you see where we've been lost in thinking that this physical sense of body that we've been running around with is our body, whereas all this time the real body is the body of consciousness. There isn't any other body. And so in this way we've now understood that our consciousness and the all-inclusive experience or the all-inclusive formation of what is happening in and as our consciousness is our body and everything of our body. And in this way we understand I am that I am. We can observe anything at any place within our body, which means within our consciousness, and realize I am am that. That which we're observing, even though it appears to be through the mind, isn't separate from us, isn't different from us, or I, I should say, isn't separate from I, isn't different than I, isn't over there. It's right here, in and as my one consciousness, my one body. And so, the infinite variety of forms and bodies and activity and amounts and colors and fragrances and character, nature that we observe, place, condition that we observe, we now understand as all being our one consciousness, therefore our one body of experience. There is our truthful body, consciousness. We are certainly going to understand at a very deep and thorough level the organs and the functions of body, the 
activity of body, the type of body that we're all experiencing individually. We're going to understand the experience of individual body, unique body. We're going to understand why and how illness, injury, disease, underweight, overweight occurs and how it's revealed as harmonious, how it's healed in other words. We're going to understand a lot about body but today I'm really hearing that we must continue to expound on consciousness as being the only body. We must lift our belief, our attention, our interest and our effort away from that which we've believed to be body, which is the physical body. We must withdraw our interest and concern and effort from the organs and functions and activities, the bones, the blood, everything going on in the picturable body that is called physical. And I'm just hearing that I should give a disclaimer right here, as we sometimes do, and that is, please, please, and I really mean this, only lift into this higher level of consciousness, the pure spiritual consciousness, when you are ready and comfortable to. Don't do it just because I'm saying so. Do it only when you are comfortable with it. Comfortable, in other words, to withdraw from the physical sense and stop trying to look after it, stop trying to heal it, stop stop trying to maintain it of its own self and rely purely on the spiritual body now to reveal the truthful experience of life, including body. Please do not do this until you are really ready and comfortable. And in the meantime, if you're not ready yet, it doesn't matter. And continue to use any aid you need, from literally a band-aid to a pill to even surgery, If you need to and if you feel more comfortable or safe in doing so, please understand this and hear this very, very deeply and seriously. It's simply not necessary to step out and risk your experience of body and life until you're feeling really ready to do so. And there's no harm. You're not holding yourself back by using aids to help the body along until you're ready. You're really not. And the way to deal with these aids as you're going along in your journey to spiritual readiness is to realize that no matter what these aids look like or the experience of them, even right to the point of surgery, what they all really are is, of course, spirit because there is nothing but spirit. And so even when you're using them or receiving this help, this medical help, simply realize as you're experiencing it that all is spirit. This band-aid is actually spirit. This pill is actually spirit. This vitamin is actually spirit. This surgery actually is the activity that can only be one thing because there is only one thing and that is spirit. So in this realization, you are, even as you're going through the experience, lifting your consciousness away from the material up into a higher awareness of what it really is. And in that way, it's serving you beautifully. All right, there's our disclaimer and I hope you take it seriously. It's very important that you do. All right, but when you're ready, indeed you one day take that leap and decide I will no longer pay attention to, be interested in, other than in a very minor way, and certainly not try to heal or maintain any kind of bodily health or vitality or youth in a physical material way. I will now, this day, lift into pure spiritual consciousness in the realization that my consciousness is my body. My whole experience is the one body of experience, the one body of being. And it's my individual 
unique body experience. Consciousness, consciousness. All right, let's lift right now into being interested in seeking. As Jesus said, seek not the things, but seek the kingdom of God. Well, the kingdom of God is the kingdom of consciousness. The kingdom of the incorporeal, the kingdom of the infinite, the kingdom of the omnipresent. Nothing different ever. I am consciousness. And because consciousness is one and oneness, then my body is consciousness. Nothing within consciousness, even this physical sense of body that is a local sense as well. No, no, I am consciousness. That means that my body is actually a body of awareness. And that body of awareness, being consciousness, is infinite and can be nothing less. It is incorporeal and can be nothing different. It is omnipresence and can be nothing different. I am, this very second, I actually am, even though my mind may still be fighting the truth, it doesn't make any difference, the mind has no power and is proven to have no power the very moment we lift into consciousness as I, consciousness as body, and stick with it. I am consciousness. Therefore, I'm infinite. And because of oneness, my body is consciousness. My body is the body of awareness, which is infinite, incorporeal, and omnipresent. Everything of my tangible experience is my tangible body because my body is consciousness and consciousness is always tangible. There is no intangible consciousness. There is no unmanifest consciousness. There is no invisible consciousness. There is no invisible omnipresence. But you see, the mind says, yes, there is. All of God is invisible to me. All of God is intangible to me. All of God is undemonstrated, unmanifest, and I've got to spend my time trying to manifest it. I've got to spend my time trying to demonstrate it. Here and there, in these local places that seem to need it. Well, you see the folly of such a consciousness now, or belief now. God is forever manifest. Oneness doesn't have different departments. We've heard this throughout the teaching. Oneness is oneness, and because oneness is omnipresence, then every place of oneness is fully oneness, and that full oneness is fully manifest, fully demonstrated. You can't have one part of oneness that is unmanifest and another part that is manifest. One part that is undemonstrated and another that is demonstrated. One part that is invisible and intangible and another that is visible and tangible. It's nonsense. Oneness is the whole of itself, and because there is none else, then God is the only manifestation. And God is already complete, so all manifestation is already complete. God, because of oneness, is the only demonstrated good. And because God is eternal, all demonstrated good is eternally demonstrated. Here and now it's demonstrated. The whole of God is fully demonstrated right here where you are, being you. The whole of God is fully manifest right here where you are actually being you. The whole of God is fully visible right here where you are actually being you. The whole of God is fully tangible right here where you are actually being you. And so let's lose this nonsense of unmanifest good, undemonstrated good, invisible good, intangible good. No, no, the whole of consciousness is fully complete, fully manifest, demonstrated, visible and tangible, right here, this second, as you. Now, how do you witness more of the good that is fully complete here and as you? By rising into the awareness that you are consciousness and nothing different. You are God. You are the incorporeal, infinite, omnipresence itself.
There is none else. Therefore you have to be that, and indeed you are. I am that I am. If you see me, Jesus told us, you see the Father, you see God, you see the incorporeal. It's just that your mind is misperceiving God as that which you see as me. Your mind is having a corporeal sense of that which is only incorporeal. Your mind is having a local finite sense of that which is only omnipresent and infinite. Lift now, lift. Lift into consciousness as being the all of you, the only of you, with nothing different, nothing less, nothing changeable, nothing capable of being different or changeable. You are, as consciousness, rising into the awareness. And remember, all awareness is fully embodied, demonstrated, manifest, visible and tangible. And so rising in consciousness is the most thrilling, the most exciting adventure of self. Rising in consciousness. Never trying to get higher consciousness down here to fix and heal and harmonize and pacify all of down here's experience. Forget it, forget it, forget it. If ever you try, in fact, hear this carefully, if ever you try to reach God for some good, you're so far out of truth, you may as well go to the movies instead. Never do that. Never do that. Forget about down here. Forget about what the mind is detecting. Your soul journey in truth is to rise in consciousness. And we are being given such a beautiful clarity about exactly how to do that. Rise in consciousness. And that is to the awareness that you are consciousness. Only. Only. You're nothing else. You're not what you seem to be. And your problem isn't what it seems to be, nor is your good what it seems to be. All is consciousness. Period. There is nothing else. I am consciousness. I am the one body of consciousness. Consciousness is my body. Nowhere in the entirety of my experience is outside of my body. Consciousness is my body. I'm having an infinite number of experiences of my body and in a material sense they're named an infinite number of names. And in that material sense they act in an infinite number of ways. But... All of that experience is simply an illusory sense of that which actually is. And when I now rise into the truthful awareness of that which truly is, then I witness the whole of my body, degree by degree by degree, becoming that of only harmony, becoming that of only love and life, freedom, joy. We'll hear more about that in another class. I am consciousness, and besides consciousness, there is nothing else at all, therefore nothing else about me. Therefore, if I'm ever thinking or pondering or reading about, listening about, anything other than consciousness, if I'm exploring or seeking anything other than pure consciousness, if ever I'm wishing to understand more of truth and it's anything other than understanding more about consciousness, as we're hearing in this class, then I am off in the woods somewhere and I'm not actually rising in consciousness. But every time you are seeking to know more about consciousness, every time you're seeking the spiritual being, the spiritual body, the spiritual experience, the spiritual thing, place, condition, amount, activity, organ, function, then you're rising in consciousness. Every minute of seeking truth is a rising in consciousness. That's how to make the utmost use of every minute 
every hour of your truth study, if you like, your soaking of truth messages, your soaking yourself in truth messages. Every time you sit down and you read something or listen to something, then make sure you understand what you're hearing about or reading about is that of consciousness, not of anything to do with a lower level of consciousness, which seems to be physical and material, consist of time and space, cause and effect. If ever you're reading about or listening to or attending anything that's interested in and exploring more about these nameable experiences of life, then you're not in truth. And we have to know this. Otherwise, we're going to spend more and more time lost as far as truth goes anyway. I am consciousness. I am spirit. I am the infinite. And I'm incapable of being anything other than consciousness, anything other than spirit, anything other than infinite. Because the infinite can only be itself. There is none else. There is nothing else. There is no other way of being anything but that one that is. And that is the infinite, the infinitude itself, omnipresent at every place and point of itself at the same time incorporeal, spiritual. No name, no form, no shape, pure consciousness. I am that. I am consciousness. Think now of the entirety of your experience filled with and as and being pure consciousness. Begin to dissolve the senses of consciousness that we're having as what we call the material world. Its bodies, its forms, its activities, its amounts, its names, its places, its conditions. Just gently and lovingly withdraw your affixed attention and belief from the way things appear or the way the one appears is better stated. And bring your consciousness, bring your awareness and fill your awareness, fill your interest with and in pure consciousness, pure love, pure presence. I am consciousness. The whole of me is consciousness. There is nothing about me, nothing I can possibly experience other than consciousness. Even when the mind is having a full sense of consciousness that can be painful or leave me suffering in experience some way, leave me ill or diseased or injured or sad or lonely, Actually, even whilst this, even whilst this experience is happening, all I am really experiencing is pure consciousness because there is none else. All I am actually experiencing is infinity because there is none else and infinity is incapable of being anything else. There's no room to be anything else or have or experience anything else, even if it were possible. And it's absolutely, 100% utterly impossible. You understand that. But even if it were just to play for a second, there'd be no room for that other experience or different experience because the infinite occupies the whole of infinitude with itself. So where would there be room for even one little grain of something different? There isn't. Anyway, it's impossible. The infinite can only and indeed is only its experience, incapable of anything other, anything else. So right here where you are experiencing something finite, actually what you're experiencing, when we take the mind away, is infinity because there is none else. 
actually what you're experiencing this very second is the whole of God, the whole of the incorporeal, the whole of omnipresence, right here where you are as you. Nothing is missing, nothing is incomplete, nothing is separate from you. All good is here this very second. You cannot possibly go to God and receive anything of God that you don't already have because the whole of God is right here being you. And the way of experiencing it is to lift into what God is. And that is consciousness. Pure consciousness. The infinitude itself. The incorporeality itself. The oneness itself. And that oneness is pure consciousness, do you see? If we're thinking of anything other than consciousness, if we're thinking of or bothered by or fearful of any objectified form the mind is making of consciousness, any finite form, good or bad, the mind is making of consciousness, then we're not in oneness, we're in two-ness. And that's why we're continuing to suffer. But as soon as we understand oneness and understand that oneness as being consciousness, then we're going to fill our interest and our pondering full of only consciousness. And there's the miracle. And as soon as we do this, as we heard yesterday in class one, it's often surprising the miracles that can be evident quickly just by the awareness of oneness, just by seeking nothing but oneness, which is consciousness. I seek to have my awareness opened and filled with the truth that consciousness is God. Consciousness is what I am. Consciousness is my body. The whole of my consciousness is the whole of my body. And the whole, because it exists at every point of itself at the same time, is all of my body at every place of experience simultaneously. And so whether I'm looking out at a human being, an animal being, an insect being, a plant being, some other kind of natural being or man-made so-called being, what I am now realizing is that the whole of consciousness is right there being that observed form or observed experience and therefore the whole of my body is that. I've lost this false idea that I, as my body here as a physical thing, is separate from the body of the other human over there or the other animal or insect or plant over there. No. No. The whole of my experience is my body, is my consciousness. Consciousness is my body. My body is a body of awareness, not a body of physicality. And that awareness is consciousness and is infinite, incorporeal and omnipresent. Let us, for the next 24 hours before our third class, think continually about consciousness as I, consciousness as body. Let us think and let us rise into a greater living awareness of the entirety of my all-inclusive experience, all-being consciousness, being my oneness of body. Let us withdraw or begin to lose, really, truthfully begin to lose the idea that my body is this physical sense of body I've believed it to be. My body, the only body, is God. And God is consciousness, and therefore my body is consciousness. And because consciousness is one, indivisible, inseparable, all one, all the same, all omnipresence, being omnipresent, then consciousness is my one body.
we're lifting right up into a new paradigm, a new understanding, a new consciousness that's completely left behind the old idea, the material idea of body being a physical thing with arms and legs and hearts and lungs and livers and so on. No, 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 no. I am that. I am the life. I am the body, Jesus tells us. Well, what is I? Consciousness. God. Therefore, by definition, the body is consciousness, which is infinite and eternal and omnipresent oneness. I am the life. I am the body. Consciousness is the life. Consciousness is the body. No one's ever told us that a body is physical. No one in truth, anyway. Where has this idea come from? It's only because we've grown to believe a false sense. And that false sense, that which the mind has presented as a local, finite, physical idea of body. Well, that idea, that concept, that locality, that finiteness, simply isn't true, simply doesn't exist, and is incapable of existing in truth. And so do you see, as we rise now out of this old false idea of body into truthful body, which is consciousness, infinite, omnipresent and eternal, we're quickly going to begin to experience truthful body. And as we look back down at our old idea of body, which is physical, we will quickly see it whole and healthy and vital. It really is quite a miracle what happens to the physical sense of body when we leave it alone, lift up into truthful body and rest there and simply behold truthful body evident as every part of our body, which is every part of our consciousness. The physical sense of body being just one element of our body. Our body, as you know now, is the entirety, all-inclusive experience of our consciousness. Infinite, omnipresent, eternal fully demonstrated, always, fully manifest, fully complete, whole, perfect, vital, and is quickly witnessed to be so as we now rise into the truthful body and rest there and simply behold its truth. All right, let's stop there for class two and live with it for at least 24 hours. I don't know, we might have another 48-hour period. Let's see what we are being told. And so, either if I see you tomorrow or the day after tomorrow on class three, thank you, thank you again. This is a tremendously deep and beautiful message we're hearing. Thank you so much for being the consciousness that is hearing it and rising into its truth. Much, much love. Many blessings. Bye-bye.